artificial intelligence is revolutionizing public service and also enhancing the citizen experience by streamlining processes, reducing bureaucracy, and delivering more personalized and efficient services. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and uh, joining us today to talk about that are Preetha Mehra, Chief Information Officer at the U.S. Public, uh, uh, sorry, U.S. Postal Service, and Heidi Kabilski, who's Vice President for U.S. Federal Government Civilian Business Unit at Microsoft. I want to thank you both for joining us today. Um, I'd like to start with you, Preetha, if I may. Um, what is, um, and how would you describe how uh, AI and machine learning are really making a difference in improving customer service? Certainly, I, I wanna first give you a little background in that the Postal Service is undergoing a massive transformation. So we, uh, our Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy, published a Delivering for America plan in 2021. Uh, which essentially is modernizing the entire service uh, across the board, whether it's hiring practices, the network optimization, um, and everything we do, our product suite, or the product suites that we offer the customers. So um, machine learning has played a pretty large role in ours. If you look across the spectrum, I mean, if you look at the traditional AI, we've been using it for citizen services like making sure that customers know when their package is going to hit them. Uh, you know, when they call to, uh, to make a passport appointment, you're talking to a you know, natural language processing agent. Um, we are looking at, uh, across the board in our security features, when you look at our cyber tools, we've been uh, engaged in leveraging many different capabilities around machine learning. And now, as you look at uh, natural, as as you look at at uh, generative AI, uh, we are looking at where we can bring that value into the postal service. Almost immediately, we're looking at ways such as uh, just developer assist. We have over 950 applications. If we have to modernize them, uh, a lot of them aren't very well uh, documented. We've lost the, 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 the first developer on this, on this, on this project. So uh, we've been looking at natural, you know, looking at generative AI to help us document and explain code and perhaps even help us write code. So uh, there is, uh, I, I believe, and then of course in the whole world of processing, uh, optical character recognition has been an age-old use for the Postal Service, and we're continuing to use that to refine it, to really understand from the markings of a, pa of a package when a package is fraudulent and hasn't been paid for, and all of these things. So yes, uh, there's a tremendous opportunity and application for us across the Postal Service. Next, I'd like to ask if you could share a couple of examples where AI is really starting to help improve the customer experience at the Postal Service. Yeah, I think the one that obviously jumps to mind is the reason why most people call the Postal Service, where's my package, right? So we've used AI-inferred intelligence to detect changes in the network status of a package. And we use that intelligence then to give the customer much better information of when to expect the package delivery. This is especially in the case when a package does not take its normal route for whatever reason. Um, that's one. Uh, the second one that comes to mind is definitely, um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, it's our uh, natural language processing capabilities through our customer support and help desk. I think there's, uh, we're looking at many, many different ways to improve that experience so a customer can get an answer immediately. Uh, and so one of them is uh, scheduling passports. You can schedule a passport without talking to an agent anymore uh, if you call the help desk and it's very expedient and it's very quick. And so, yeah, that's, that's def definitely one that jumps to mind. So next, I'd like to ask, what, what are some of the issues that agencies are facing uh, in trying to leverage AI? I'd love to hear the answers from both of you on that. Uh, Preetha, maybe you could start. Sure. I think the first issue really is around governance. Because generative AI can be very powerful, but it can also be very biased. And so having uh, the right governance and controls around your AI policy, I think, is very critical to ensure and maintain fairness, trust, security, privacy, you name it. Um, the second is upskilling your 
your workforce. I think it's really important, especially those that are establishing the infrastructure for AI within your organization. It's really important that you train your workforce, whether it's your CISO organization, whether it's your organization that's actually establishing the constructs and the infrastructure for the AI generation within your organization, whether you're using SaaS products or not. Um, uh, I think, and of course, then training your solutioners to even think to bring AI into the organization. So really exposing them to those capabilities is important. And I think the third uh, is selecting the right AI technologies to really drive value. Because it's very easy to get excited about it, but it's another to say, well, how is this going to improve uh, our world? How is it actually going to bring true business value? And focusing on those where you really see that. And Heidi, what additional issues are you seeing that agencies are still uh, facing these days? So I would say at a macro level, agencies are in the process of evaluating what they expect their policies to be to allow AI in their agency, working in, in conjunction with OMB to follow the executive order that Biden announced on Monday. And, and of course, like Preetha said, Preetha hit the nail on the head that it, you know, the, you gotta make sure that the data and, and your governance are in order once you enable the capability so that it doesn't grow like wildfire. And then I would say, you know, making sure that you have a plan early to educate all the users, um, because the technology community in an agency, of course, understands the benefit, but it's important to start educating agencies, um, you know, top to bottom, what, what will this provide for us, and help tell the story early on how they intend to use it and what it's going to enable, that's going to enable their mission forward so that they usurp any concerns that naysayers have and I think the other part of it, in Microsoft is very interested in helping in this regard, but what do we need to do to educate the American public on safe and responsible use of AI? Because it's all, it's all in one, you know, we're all living in one world. And then lastly, what recommendations would you have or what plans are you putting in place to really help your organizations or the government in general um, take advantage of artificial intelligence more effectively and, and as fast as possible? I would say the first thing is to sit down with your cloud, your cloud and your AI providers and offer up use cases that, that the agency is willing to experiment with, that they know are safe, that maybe have more public data that they you know, aren't as concerned about. Um, and then I would say get started, get, just get started. So at Microsoft, what we're doing with agencies right now is enabling their Azure tenant to, um, to turn on Azure OpenAI. And then we also recommend that they sign the waiver that um, avoids Microsoft from logging their data and feeding that into our machine learning. And then we are doing two simple use cases, one we call GovChat, one we call DocChat, where we're suggesting ways that you can emulate ChatGPT into your environment and feed it your own data and just play with it, right? And then offer it to other constituents to look at and see how they might make use of it. At Microsoft, we're more excited to see what use cases our constituents drive. We're, our goal is to enable the platform. I think all the creativity and innovation is gonna come from the agencies. And Preetha? Yeah, so we're doing a couple of things. We recently announced a chief data and analytics office. Uh, and, and this office is in charge of managing our data strategies. And that's been very, very good for us because we've now really got a true path to setting up an enterprise data strategy, which is what are your critical data sets and these data sets are the foundations of any model that you would want to feed with information. It's also important when you do this that when you're feeding these AI models that you're doing this with the right vectoring and the right cataloging of data so it doesn't become a mess and you're more likely to be able to train the model to give you more valuable results. So that's one. The other is that we're really promoting learning of AI and ML capabilities within our organization 
We have what we call tech chats where we invite industry leaders to come in and just whoever wants to sign up from our CIO group can. And, uh, and we talk about many, many different aspects of, of AI and generative AI and you know, examples and all of that to bring it home. And, large, and thirdly, we're also setting up, we've already established an environment, uh, a sandbox where we've uh, got all of the key players that are, have to make these solution sets for the organization, our architecture group, our infrastructure group, and of course the data group, uh, so that they've started experimenting with the platforms, understanding the offers that are being put forward on, in this space. And the most important of all, we've, we're establishing an AI policy um, and making sure that there's a governing body and a governing council. So as you define your AI applications that we've got other eyes on it, making sure that we're protecting the trust, the privacy, because the Postal Service is one of the most trusted organizations in our, uh, in our country and we want to stay that way. So really uh, doing it ethically and, and with a privacy mindset is really important to us, so yeah. Well, Preetha and Heidi, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your respective insights on the application of artificial intelligence for public service and better citizen experience. So thank you for joining us. Thanks for thank having you. us.